are God's Church of Love online, and I'm about to bring the word followed with Pat's Two Cents. Now listen to this. This is Isaiah chapter 3, and God has a word for his people. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty and the honorable men and the counselor and the cunning artificer and eloquent orator. And I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother, of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people, for Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Now listen, I'm going to read it again. Put that on every day today, and everybody you know. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance doth witness against them and they declare their sin as in Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Here's the word for you and me. Say unto the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. And all oh, my people, they shall lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Woo! The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. Listen, you guys. Listen, listen, listen. We're in the last days. There's no idiot in the earth that doesn't know that. We are in the last days. And you notice how, as he said, they proclaim their sin as in Sodom. This world is glorifying trans transgenderism. They are glorifying homosexuality. They're glorifying pedophilia. They're glorifying bestiology. They're glorif glorifying sin. They glorify... Uh, drink your sorrows away. They glorify uh, sex until the morning. You know, just sex here and sex there, sex everywhere, sex with whoever. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. I can't tell you who to sock it to. So they want you to lose your identity. They want you to lose your the line in the sand. They want you to blend all that in so that everything goes in this society. You do your thing, I do my thing. It's all good. It's all good. No, that's a lie from the pit. That is the kind of attitude that will bring the curses of God onto your life. It will bring the curses of God into your circumstances everything about your life if it's diabolically opposed to God. God is diabolically opposed to you. But for his people, 
the ones that are trying, not getting it all right, not living a life without failure, not living a life without tripping over into a little sin here and there and asking God immediately for forgiveness and fighting to get it right. No. Those sincere, genuine, pure-hearted ones seeking God with all their might, seeking to please him with all their life, all their being, all their strength, it shall be well with you. When all hell breaks loose and God brings judgment here and, and showers wrath over there and pours down all kind of devastation over there, wherever you are, God will maneuver you away from the line of fire. God will bring mercy, cover you, change your circumstances, force you to be evicted, force you to lose your car, whatever he's got to do to reposition you so that you are out of the line of fire. You are out of danger's way. When he's ready to bring wrath, the wrath of his anger onto the people who are bent on sin, given to sin, worshiping sin, serving sin in every sinful manner they can. But you who are trying, who are crying and trying, who are struggling and fighting to stay in God's way because you're all for God, hoping he's all for you and sometimes doubting. Here's the thing, God knows, he sees your efforts. He sees your heart's cry, your desire. Don't get discouraged, even when you trip over your own feet. Don't be discouraged. Even Jesus said, if they're not against me, they're for me. You may not be getting A's on all your tests that God gives you in life. You may not even be getting B's. You may be getting some C's and a few C minuses. On a few occasions, you might end up getting an F. But as soon as you get that up, you hold that F up to God. God, I'm sorry. Please help me. And you're fighting tooth and nail to get that F back to a passing grade. You're the one that God's going to fight for. You're the one that God's going to provide for. You're the one that God's going to work healing in all your circumstances. You're the one that God's going to rain his peace on. He's going to shower you with his love. You're the one that has his favor, that has his mercy. But woe to those who don't give a you-know-what, what God wants. Woe to them. That's not your problem. You stay focused on his love for you. You stay focused on his mercy. You remember that God is touched with the feelings of your infirmities. He understands your weaknesses. He understands why you have those weaknesses. God is a compassionate father. He's a merciful God. He's long suffering. No, he's not a patsy, and that's why those who play him for a patsy are going to have their day. And they're going to end up writing a check they're behind, cannot cash. But when it comes to you, some of you are broken. You have been broken down for so many years. There's so much damage that needs to be undone before God can make you whole. But you're in the process. You're on the conveyor belt. Stay on that conveyor belt. Stay there. Go through all the changes you got to go through 
Stay there. Because that conveyor belt is your ark of safety, baby. The conveyor belt that leads you in God's ways. You stay right there. Let him work on you and tweak you and fix you and, and re-break and remold and do everything he's got to do. Stick you in the fiery furnace and bake you until you're cured, solid, strong, fortified, whole, useful for the kingdom, for the master's hand. Stay there. God's got blessings for you. There's divine protection, supernatural covering for you because you're fighting to remain in the ark of safety. You're staying on God's conveyor belt. You're staying the, the process. You're staying the course. You're pressing in, fighting to endure until the end. Be encouraged. Don't fret. No matter what goes off in this world, no matter what wars begin, no matter what attacks go on, no matter what demonic onslaught, demonic onslaughts take place, don't you fear. You've got Almighty God on your side. There's nothing on this earth. There's nothing in the invisible realm that God has not created or has allowed. God has created whatever there is he has created. And he allows what he allows. Nothing can be without him. Nothing. So you remember, you got the strongest one. God is the head honcho, baby. In the scheme of all things, he is the head honcho. And everything else that wants to rise up against the knowledge of Christ, they got to bow, baby, to God. They got to bow in submission in the name of Jesus. You hear me? And the same authority that Jesus had, he gave to us. You take authority. You don't let the devil run over you. You take authority. Because in these last days, you got to put up or shut up. You got to do battle. But you've already won the war. But you still got to fight some of the fights. But you don't fight it in your own strength. You fight it in the name of Jesus. You fight it in faith, knowing that God is for you, not against you. And know that no matter what, no evil shall befall you. Mm. And you won't be afraid by the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. God's got you. Stay on God's conveyor belt. Stay the course, no matter what. There's I, I'm, 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 I'm going to be a little gross, a little crass here. There is not a nut, a climax, a whatever you want to call it, that's worth you falling off the conveyor belt. There is not a dollar, a position. There is nothing that should create a, a, a temptation for you to fall off the conveyor belt. There is no demon strong enough to push you off the conveyor belt. You've got all power and authority, baby, imparted to you because God is on your side. And if God be for you, who can be against you? You got it in, I mean, you got it, baby. It's, it's, it's in the bag for you. You got it. You're on the winning side. You just got to stay your behind. And that's where, your, that's where your will comes into play. You have to have a made up mind to stay on that conveyor belt. Even when the conveyor belt takes you through changes that you don't like. Even when the conveyor belt 
takes you through stuff that you don't that that hurts you that that feels uncomfortable that is scary that feels threatening no you're on god's conveyor belt baby can nothing hurt you you may have to go through some setbacks swallow it know that whatever god allows if it feels like a loss it's a win in the long run it's a win in the long run let me share this with you this is my little lipstick. Now, got my lipstick in my hand. I've got my mascara in my hand. I got my face in my hand. That's my foundation. <laughs> you know, you get old, it, it takes a lot more work. I got my powder in my hand. How much else can I hold? I got my scissors in my hand. After a while, there's only so much I can hold in my hand. Now, this is what I want you to see. What God does at times, when he wants to bless you on a new level, on a new level, somebody may come in this house right now and say, Pat, I come from the company of blah, blah, blah. It's a, a cosmetic company. And we have decided to award you with a whole lot of makeup. But you have to be able to hold it in your hand to keep it. So what do I have to do? in order to hold the new in my hand. I have to drop the old. And there will be times in your life while you're on the conveyor belt. I'm making a point. While you're on God's conveyor belt, that you will have to drop some things. Safety nets, comfort zones, habits, in order to receive the divine supernatural reward of God himself. Are you willing? That's what you have to decide. That's where your will comes into play. Is it worth going through that to get this? I say yes. I've lived long enough to know it is. Some of you still have to learn the worthiness, the value of what God has for you. Some of you have no idea what's in store for you, what God has prepared for you. Hmm. But I say this, keep the faith, stay strong, stay in God's word, keep going at him, praying for inner healing, praying for deliverance, taking authority, rebuking this, rebuking that reading your word, getting guidance, advice, learning how to uh, uh, how to appropriate the characteristics of God into your life, calling on the Holy Spirit for help and strength and power, rebuking and loosing and, and, and declaring and de decreeing blessing over your life and just staying and trusting in God when your eyes say, no, God's not going to come through for you and you decide to trust anyway. Just whatever you do, stay the course because God has got a safety zone over his people as long as they stay on that conveyor belt. No evil shall befall you. That's a promise from Psalms 91. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen, God's people.